Thanks, everybody, and th uh, thanks, Taylor. I, that was a nice little bell that went off. Um, do you know what that means? An angel got its wings, right? Oh, I think it means it's time to start the show, B. What do oh, you yeah, say? Oh, yeah, start the show. All right, welcome to the Comedy of uh, State, and uh, I'm Brenda Churchill. I am the LGBTQIA Alliance of Vermont uh, liaison to the State House, along with my co-liaison, Keith Ghostlamp. Today, my guest is uh, Taylor Radke, who is uh, uh, showing up for the second time for this show. I just want to mention that Alex uh, and company lost the show that we taped over a month ago. And yeah, it was it was one of those oh, too bad, so sad things. But we are back uh, doing it again. And um, uh, we'll give Alex a hearty fuck you for, for losing it and putting, <laughs> us back on the, putting us back on the map today. It's and okay. I appreciate that. Um, so Taylor, you're uh, recovering from your plane accident and uh, uh, something, like that, yeah, something like Brenda, that, Brenda. Yeah. Not planning on getting out on the snow soon, even though it's like looking good out there. You know where I'm relieving myself of all temptation by not getting my new brace because here's when it comes down to it. If I have all the gear I need, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, you got to have the, the strength back in there. That's yeah. uh, that's long that's pretty game. Pretty much what it is. I know, having recovered from several heart episodes, that you just got to go the whole distance and. And if you get it done, you'll be glad you did, and you'll feel better and be stronger and ride better. Fuck yeah. All those good things. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about some things that have been happening in, in the state. Uh, most recently, I attended the Rights and Democracy uh, by state meeting. That's uh, New Hampshire and Vermont both have um, Rights and Democracy branches. Uh, it was a convention to honor uh, people um, for their achievements as well as uh, elect some people to uh, different offices and develop a people's platform, uh, which is basically the heart of rights and democracy. Um, we got to meet uh, some wonderful transgender advocates there. They run a program called TOLD, which did I, I told you what that was, right? Do you remember what it was? Trans <laughs> transgender organiza Organizing and um, uh, RD, LD, let's see, and Leadership Development, so TOLD. And I want to do something like that here in Vermont as well. I'm going to propose that to the leadership of uh, Rights and Democracy um, in, in a near meeting. What it would model is what the Democratic Party is actually doing is to develop a lot of queer or alternative uh, lifestyle candidates to run for office, of which I've brought two uh, to the Democratic Party. Uh, one um, transgender man, a good friend of mine, and uh, another uh, a I don't know if you ever heard of uh, have, uh, the Drag Queen Story Hour. You know, I've I've heard it mentioned, but I don't know anything about it, honestly. Drag Queen Story Hour is started by my friend uh, Justin and Taylor, and uh, their characters are Emoji Nightmare and uh, Nikki Champagne. Oh, yeah. And, and what they're doing is um, uh, going around and doing a, a story hour for kids. They started it in um, um, Cambridge. I, fought, I went to Cambridge with them, and... Watch them there, and they're doing it at the uh, uh, what's the library in town? Fletcher Fletcher Library. Yeah, Fletcher Free. Fle Fletcher Free Library. They're doing the Fletcher Free Library uh, this uh, Saturday. So I know this will be airing after that, but if you did get a chance to go, make sure that you give them uh, give them props for for doing that. And uh, Justin is just a, a tremendous activist. He is a, a board member of Outright Vermont, uh, and Nikki uh, is um, um, over at. Uh, Pride. She works at Pride and is uh, not only a drag queen, but she's one of my transgender sisters as well, having come out, uh, having come out uh, uh, last year. And I'm, I'm so appreciative of her and her time. Um, you know, um, going after some candidates through uh, rights and democracy is an interesting proposition. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, uh, they're ready for me yet, but uh, we're going to take them on. Uh, I want to model what they did in New Hampshire, and I want to come out with something. I, I originally called it um, um, diversity development, or DD, and then I said organizing and diversity development, and that would be ODD, which would be odd, and so I just said yeah. qu queer. Might be misconstrued <laughs> queer. somewhere. Could be misconstrued. Queer organizing and diversity development, so quad, I think, would uh, would work well, and I'm going to propose that here in the next couple of weeks. Um, other stuff going on in the legislature? Um, oh, I got to say goodbye to the uh, Department of Motor Vehicle Commissioner Ide. He was done um, last Friday. I was actually the last official meeting that he had in his office. 
and I thank them for coming up with the uh, working with us to develop a third gender marker on uh, driver's licenses and state IDs. Yeah, the the X. Yeah, she's got it. And um, the uh, uh, the nice part was he said, well, really, it was it wasn't that difficult. He went to a meeting of um, all the commissioners of, of motor vehicles in all the states, and they all noted that this was a trend uh, that they were coming up to, and that they would rather embrace it and be ahead of it uh, than have to catch up. And I think that's what I think that's what and we're doing here is we're we're, right we're ahead there. of. We're a little bit ahead of the curve, and uh, and I'm grateful. Uh, Oregon and California um, have already passed legislation. We did this not uh, legislatively. We did it administratively and took advantage of the new um, request for proposal that driver's licenses were going to require and IDs as well. So uh, this probably won't affect me as much as it will um, some generations to come, and I'm grateful uh, to him in his office. Also met uh, the person who's going to be the interim uh, director of motor vehicles or commissioner of motor vehicles. And Wanda, good luck. I hope you get appointed. She's she's a, a person who is well versed in uh, all aspects of that, having worked with the commissioner Ide for uh, a little while, a few years. Um, so that was that was one of the bigger pieces of things that that got going the last uh, uh, couple months. Um, legislatively or during the summer, really during the off season. Uh, coming up, we start um, back at, in the Capitol in January. And uh, I can say immediately things that are going to heat up are the, uh, and this was actually brought forth by Senator, Senate uh, Leader Pro Tem, uh, Tim, 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 Peter. No, I can't think of his name. Oh my goodness, it just, lo I lost it. That's okay, it'll come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the Senate leader, uh, Pro Tem, uh, has requested that the $15 an hour minimum wage be one of the first items on the agenda that the legislature is going to pick up. And I just recently learned that they're also going to uh, um, go for uh, universal primary care, which when you do the math the way that it needs to be done, it shows that we can have that here in Vermont and that uh, we will have, have it... Um, universally, which is exactly what we need. And universal primary care That's huge. is a little bit different than uh, what people think is, is uh, free health care because what this does is it actually provides your initial uh, coverage for your visits to your doctor and it is, it is, more, uh, it is more on the preventative end of it. So it's, you know, imagine going to the doctor to be, to be well and to make sure that you remain uh, well instead of always going in for something catastrophic or going to the emergency room. So it's going to include massages? I would hope so. Um, massages would be good. And maybe a little acupuncture? Maybe a little acupuncture. Uh, could be uh, a few other things. I'd like to see dentistry as part oh. of that. Uh, it's yeah. critical to people's health is, is having good dental care. And my dad was a dentist. Yeah, I did, that I didn't know. Yeah, kind of an exciting thing, but there's, there's a weird thing about having your own father be your dentist because gloves are not as important to them. <laughs> and he was a tall man, so he had very large sausage fingers. So uh -oh. to get those those bare things grubbing around in your mouth, it's, now I would say it's <laughs> worth the free dentistry, but back in the day when I didn't have a choice, that was a whole other yeah, story. Yeah, being a little kid with somebody with big hands, I, I've got to think that that might be... Uh, might be a little difficult. <laughs> um, what uh, what I remember is I hated dentists. I don't like going. I still don't like going. I have a broken tooth here, and I'm just like not looking forward. As opposed to, it. to all the other friends you have, they're like, oh, I fucking love going to the dentist. I haven't just met anybody <laughs> that says that yet. Oh um, yeah, because anyone that says that is probably insane. No one likes going to the dentist. And okay. So you gotta you gotta feel for the dentist though, because could you imagine? Having a position in which no one's ever excited to see you, you know, like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta show those guys some credit. Well, I can think of maybe one other profession. Someone that does colonoscopies. No, well, that might be one, but a mortician. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah nobody would like to go uh, go see a mortician. Well, they wouldn't know either way, probably that's, at that point. That's right? true, but you never know. You just you just never know about those things. <laughs> um, so, a minimum wage, universal primary care. Um, one of the things that I worked on last year that's coming up in this uh, next session, uh, it'll be before I think the Senate Judiciary is uh, um, uh, gender neutral bathrooms. I don't know what the bill is going to be called, but it was H333 when we voted it through 
the House, and I testified there for that. Uh, and now I'll go back, of course, and testify with the uh, with the senators uh, on this as well. Has a lot of uh, strong backing. Basically, what it does is it takes uh, single-use bathrooms rather than label them um, M or F or men or women. It'll just say uh, restroom. And this will actually double your chances of being able to find a, an empty one when you go. Um, True. It uh, does not address uh, multi-use uh, bathrooms. Now, that, that may be down the uh, pike a little ways, but the University of Vermont is already uh, addressing uh, these as well, and I, I hope to have some commentary from uh, my friend Z, who started that movement up in the university campus. It spilled over to our legislator through Celine Colburn, and uh, she was one of the lead sponsors of of that movement and so uh, everything is is connected everything is connected UVM is, is a great resource for uh, education of course and and now they're also helping legislature you got a UVM thing I, 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 I mean I had I had some fun in those single-use <laughs> bathrooms at UVM do we want to know they got showers in them you know they, they do I remember having fun at uh, one of the um, uh, bathrooms down at the uh, Vermont Public Boathouse, and they do have showers Afternoon down Afternoon delight? Uh, no, this was this was oh. almost like one o'clock in the morning delight, but it, it was nice. still it was still open and it was an awful lot of fun. Very memorable as a, yeah. Sudsy. You know, <laughs> and clean too. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> there's also a, a bill that's gonna go in front of the, uh, the Senate uh, to um, remove um, weapons from a scene of domestic violence for 10 days. I did learn interesting things about this when I talked with um, one of our police chiefs and it actually may come down, and the, don't get me wrong, the police do like uh, having the law or believe that this law would be beneficial to uh, people, but there's a logistics problem of where are they gonna put the weapons, how are they gonna store them, how are they gonna return them to people. And I think when they figure that out, we'll have this law uh, in place. Uh, people don't consider uh, what happens after um, they confiscate weapons like that, but they have no place. Uh, they literally have no uh, extended facilities for storage, uh, security, and then of course returning them. And all of this is driven by money. So once once they figure that part out, I think they'll be doing well. And uh, it is something that, uh, as a community, we support as well. Um, but uh, I think uh, when they figure out how to bring everybody up to 15 bucks an hour, um, that's going to be one of the uh, big things that, uh, oh, it's Tim Ash. That, that's the, that's there you is. go. Tim uh, wanted to make that a priority of Loop his legislation. We back to that sentiment. Yeah, we, we did. So, full um, circle. It was full circle. The, uh, the key there is, and Taylor, you filled me in on this, the difference between um, uh, the service industry that you're part of and just a regular $15 minimum wage. Can you tell me about that again? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a little different. The, the core minimum wage doesn't necessarily apply to people who do work in the service industry because um, it, it is known that it is a tipped position in which people will be getting extra funds, hopefully, on a more of a commission basis. So I don't know if bumping it up to $15 an hour for a regular job would also bump it up on my end. That would be kind of nice. Um, do you find that there's days when you're short and you don't get all the tips that you want and it isn't quite as equitable as, as working a $15 an hour job? Oh, yeah, totally. Okay, so there might be some equity there. Let's hope so. Fingers crossed. I, I think that people can be part of that process and, and, and talk about it. I'm sure that the, the Senate and the, the House will be debating this furiously, so it may, have, it may have ramifications for the service industry in testifying on behalf of that. Anybody can testify. Uh, basically, you're telling your story. Uh, you're telling um, the the folks there why it's important to you. And when you do that, it, it will evoke um, uh, processes with these guys that they didn't think of because they're not in the service industry. They're not affected by minimum wage. Uh, but yet, knowing how it affects you is important. That's why I, I would advocate people to testify for the, the, the um, gender-neutral bathroom bill when it comes up, or uh, a minimum wage, or anything that you're... Just tip your bartender. Yeah, tip, tip, Just tip, do it. Tip don't it. think twice. Tip it and do they it well. judge you. If you do don't. it often and early. <laughs> <laughs> do you judge people? 100%. What's the, what's, the, uh, what, what's the judgment level on a bad tipper? Or or just what happened yesterday. If, uh, you know, if someone uses a large bill, 
to, to pay for a drink and then pulls you back because they have an extra single so they can get the $5 bill back instead of the singles. So then there's no incentive to tip. Am I a good tipper? Yeah, you're a champion. Oh, excellent. Yeah, you Thank come you. back anytime. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you got anything going on on the comedy front? Because part of you being here, uh, the comedy of state, is to make sure that we, <laughs> we throw some comedy in. Because it's not all that serious stuff that's on, on the on Yeah, the totally. Um, it's definitely, it's been, it's been a fun month for comedy. I was down, um, was down in Barrie for the first time doing Femcom, which is a, an all-female lineup uh, put on by Bitsy Byron, who's this pioneer of the comedy scene. Um, she's absolutely wonderful, and she puts on this showcase once a month, and it's fun because there's always one, one like a token male that's on the on the Fencom list, and uh, that guy usually starts it off. So it's kind of fun to have, you know, you know, just just one cock in the hen house. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, there's a brand new show showcase that a couple of good friends of mine uh, just started, and it's it's called Funny Girl. So it's also also an all female lineup, and um, that's going to be happening once a month at the Monkey House in Winooski. How exciting! Um, Anything going on at the local comedy venue here in, in town that at you're the part of? Club? Oh man, there's not that I'm part of necessarily in particular, but they really have such a good system. There are so many big names coming through here, just being being attracted to to the club as a hub itself, and it's it's been amazing to see how much community has evolved around the comedy scene. It's a really supportive community. It's, it feels we're, more like a family. We're talking about the LGBTQ community or or the comedian community the, there, the, the comedian community but also but that as well I mean I, I definitely we miss Kendall for sure. I was going to mention that because Kendall was my first guest on uh, on this show and we kicked it off and it just had a great deal of fun and uh, our second show which you and I were on was went from PG to X without any problem and yeah. I think maybe that's why he lost it. I think that's maybe what happened there like oh we can't put this on the internet they <laughs> <laughs> so um, we can certainly dive into that uh, that realm. I, I know we talked about um, coming out in that last segment, and my coming out to my parents uh, was via a letter. I actually wrote mom and dad a letter and said, "Hey," I said, "This is this is me," and gave them some details and said I, I felt very badly. I didn't want to lose their love, and um, they eventually we got together on by the phone, and uh, they said, ah, "We love you. You're you know." You're our, you're our kid. Yeah, totally. Uh, and uh, despite the fact that I was adopted, I think they still they didn't send the paperwork back or, or use the guaranteed refund. Well, that uh, guaranteed <laughs> that. refund. Right. It was uh, you know it was my worry. It was it was one of my biggest fears. So. Were they surprised though? I have to say they they were. And then um, I said, well, I, I I haven't told everybody. I said, well, who else haven't you told? I said, I haven't told the people at the um, at the transfer station yet. Mm. So I was taking my garbage there as a boy because I, I wasn't ready to come out to absolute yeah, yeah. strangers, and for the same reason I didn't come out to my folks either. Do you um, do you recall when you when you came out what uh, what went on uh, with, with your folks? Yeah, honestly, I didn't I didn't really like <laughs> when I I didn't know at all um, that I was attracted to women until I started going to UVM, and like when I first got here, I thought I was just going through like a little bit of a rebellious stage. You know, like doing everything that my Sunday school teacher told me not to do. We'd always be like, kids, like, <laughs> do not cheat, do not steal, do not play women's rugby. <laughs> and it was always so weird to me because, like, he was staring right at me in my cargo shorts every single time he said that. And I was like, what is this? What does this guy know that I don't? You know? Um, Did you ever play rugby? I did. I, I played rugby. Um, I think that's that's what happened. The rugby voodoo. It got me. All right, all right team, huddle up. Shh. Shh, don't speak. Just, just let it happen. Shh. Uh, but yeah, that's when I came out to my I came out to my mom first, and uh, I called her back on the phone in Wisconsin uh, to tell her I had a girlfriend for the first time, and I was super nervous about it. I remember being really anxious, you know, calling her on the phone, and when I told her, she really didn't hesitate for a single moment. She was like, oh, honey, oh, honey, I, uh, I got to say, I'm, uh, I'm not completely surprised. Moms know these things. That bitch knew. She knew. It's like, she knew, and my Sunday school teacher knew. I was like, why didn't anyone think to tell me? It would have been nice. <laughs> Wouldn't have had to, like, go around my youth just thinking about dicks all the time. I, <laughs> Brenda, obviously, I'm kidding about that part. I never went to church. You never went to church. Oh, 
that's such a relief to know that you're not tainted by religion. Yeah, it's certainly tainted by me, I guess, <laughs> when we <we're> here. <laughs> that works. That works. Um, so have you had subsequent dialogues with your mom about uh, about your new lifestyle? And, uh, oh, I mean, at, at this point, this happened a handful of years ago, and it's just kind of, it's kind of just part of the drill. Um, actually, one of my one of my older cousins just came out. She's she's like a good handful of years older than me, and she just came out to the family this past summer, and... Um, <laughs> It was, it was really funny. She brought her girlfriend to our little big family reunion for the first time, and they're both like pretty eccentric people. They they work in tech and they're into gaming and stuff. So they both have these like wild, asymmetric, brightly colored, dyed haircuts, and just I mean, my, my mom was able to joke with me like, oh, "Look, now you can just blend right in. Like you're not the, not the gayest <laughs> one here anymore." I was like, "Okay, it's great." It's interesting. Mom has a perspective like that that uh, that other other relatives. Mm -hmm. She's like, look how easily you blend in now. I'm like, mom, that's not very nice. <laughs> Quiet down. <laughs> um, right, so have you gotten over being outed by, by friends? And, and I mean, everybody that you and I know um, knows you. And I, I certainly had, a, had the joy of meeting uh, your, your current girlfriend. Oh, yeah, she's... She gives, she gives awesome hugs, by the way. She's a badass queen. Does she ever. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I... It's funny because as a transgender woman... I find that um, I come out every day. I have to renew what most people show as an annual thing on their calendar is, is National Coming Out Day. And I have to present as feminine. I have to present female. I have to, I have to show up and, and look, look okay for me to actually, yeah. Okay, I, you're beautiful. I, well, Stop thank, it. Now you're embarrassing me, but thank you for that. You um, and I, I think half of it is attitude because I, I do have a what the fuck attitude when I when I go out and mm -hmm. it's not hard in Vermont but I travel a lot and I travel back to Syracuse and um, uh, had an interesting uh, interesting occurrence while I was in Syracuse the the women who live across from my parents um, are and have been to my dad them dikes across the street and I'm like dad <laughs> they're people I said and they're really nice people and I got to know uh, both of them a lot better over the last week. I went down, and uh, we sent Dad to hunting camp. So that means um, I got to mom sit. And, and so being, being a, a good mom sitter, I actually spent as little time bugging her as possible, but got out a lot uh, and uh, discovered a little brewery around the corner uh, that, oh, ri that rivals okay. uh, you guys at Zero Gravity. And what, uh, what I wound up doing was making friends with a girl across the street. She... Um, is a championship dog groomer in New York State. She is one of a handful of certified the master groomers, and people come to her from all over to get their dogs groomed for show. Ladies love dogs. So she took my she took my mangy long haired dog that's staying down there in Syracuse, and we got her clipped up, and uh, she talked for hours uh, while she well really it was almost two hours that we were at the groomers, and she came out to me as transgender, and I'm I'm like. Who have you come out to? She says, well, my girlfriend. I said, nobody else. So she is, she's very much still fresh and new at this, and she would probably die that I'm talking about her, but I haven't used any names. Not anyone uh, has the same amount of spunk that you do. I don't know, but spunk or just pent-up demand or whatever you want to call it. Um, I, think that, I like spunk. Yeah, spunk's good. Um, do you have any jokes that deal with spunk in your repertoire? I mean, not necessarily spunk, I guess. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I mostly like, I'm kind of caught up in the way that people keep, keep perceiving me these days. Because I mean, although like it's pretty obvious where I stand, um, just based on looking at me, people can't help but notice that I'm, I do happen to be kind of like teeming with fertility mm. right now. <laughs> not sure if you could feel it. It's, it's oozing out of every pore. Um, it's not unnoticed on this end, just so you know. Yeah, it's like it's sort of like my my like, womb just does this like passive aggressive yoga routine every day, just like it keeps reminding me to focus and breed. Oh boy! <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm really fucking fertile. People can tell. So keep asking me that same question. Okay. They're like, Do you want to have kids? <laughs> you gonna have you gonna have kids? What about what about kids? Have you thought about kids? Are you gonna ha Do you want them? And, and honestly, people of the world, like, not, not fucking really. 
right now, I mean, I'm kind of like, Brenda, between you and I, I'm kind of like a like an underground hoarder when it comes to sentimental objects, you know, like love notes, old postcards, shit like that. And I played a lot of sports growing up, you know, so the number of stupid medals and bullshit participation ribbons that I'm going to have to pack up and lug around with me wherever I go for the rest of my life because I can't seem to get rid of them. I don't, I don't need a fuck trophy too. <laughs> I'd ask you to define that, but it's kind of self-evident. Um, I told that joke in St. Albans a couple of weeks ago and everyone was like, <gasps> Was it a fairly straight crowd that you were uh, playing to there? It was like half and half. I think they're mostly, it was just the idea of, you know, referring to children as just, you know, <laughs> I guess associating them with a with a coital act, I guess. I don't really know. <laughs> so in addition to your bag of trophies, don't you want to be able to leave those to somebody when you're, you know, when you're older and say, here's what mom did or here's what, uh, here's what I did when I was a kid? Oh, yeah, fourth place flight B, junior <laughs> golf tournament. Everyone wants that shit. <laughs> why are you still carrying it second around? Second place battle of the books, second grade. Like, I don't, why, why, do I, why does anyone need that? I don't know. I've got a lot of stuff too. I got. I, yeah. I bought a whole shipping container to park stuff in that I've never looked at for years and years and years. So it, it is problematic. They have a show about things like that. It's called Hoarders Buried Alive. You seen that show? <laughs> no. Oh my God, Brent, You got to watch it. It's crazy. There, it's it's like an intervention show where they go in and they go in and it's it's actually really sad because a lot of these people are are dealing with mental illness, but it, it goes into some of the most extreme hoarding situations you could possibly meet, like oh how giant houses, mansions, stuffed to the gills with shit. You can't even navigate around the house. You have to like squeeze in this like tunnel with just like old textile patterns and weird china and shit that's never gonna be used, but you know, there's a amount of sentimental value attached to it, so. Yeah. You gotta gotta look at it both ways. I don't I don't mean to joke. That was insensitive of me. That's okay. I'm a shit. I know that some people are genetically predisposed to keeping everything, or they're brought up or conditioned that way because they didn't have anything when they exactly. were kids. And I think that that can be uh, that can be catastrophic. I do want to get uh, a little bit back on topic. Um, right. I recently emceed the Transgender Day of Remembrance, um, which is a day every year that we um, we memorialize trans uh, people who died uh, very prematurely. They were murdered or killed or stone beaten. Um, mm -hmm. And it was over 325 names that we read. And one of the things that my folks and friends at Outright uh, pointed out was that they don't bring the kids necessarily to these memorial circumstances, uh, memorials, because it, it can profoundly affect their, their processes and, and how they grow up and how they they mature with respect to what's going on in the community. We have a suggestion that was brought in by committee that we maybe change the day uh, to not one of uh, remembrance, but one of resistance, Transgender Day of Resistance. And, and celebration. And, and focus it on um, how we survive and how we get through a very tough um, society. And we're no, the United States is number three uh, with the uh, number of deaths for transgender uh, people, uh, we follow um, Brazil and Mexico. So in this half of the world, there's the most, um, most transgender people die, uh, mm. and we're talking hundreds. Uh, and it's really, really gotta stop. It's really gotta stop. It's, it's, it's a painful ceremony to MC. It's a painful um, day of remembrance, and it's one of my uh, transgender women of color pointed out it is not a day to, to celebrate or to glorify, uh, and, but we need we need to do something different. Now um, that was uh, that was uh, Monday uh, the twentieth, I think, of, of November. Uh, since then, um, we've <laughs> we've we've debriefed that, and we have some game plans for that going on uh, next year. I just wanted to go over a couple things that are coming up. Momentum and Rainbow Umbrella are meeting tonight uh, down in Waterbury <laughs> for dinner. Um, uh, Saturday, uh, we have um, the uh, Drag Queen Story Hour at Fletcher. We talked about that. I'm going to be meeting uh, a lot of friends over the holidays to go out and have uh, dinners and, and festivities. And uh, uh, tomorrow, I get to meet with the state police. Uh, uh, who, and this is the guy who runs the 
uh, fair and impartial policing board for the state uh, as far as the state police goes. So I'm very interested to see what comes out of that. Do you know what that is? I don't well, at all. Basically, it, it uh, started out, my friend Mark Hughes uh, introduced a bill to bring uh, some uniformity and decrease the opportunity for profiling specifically to uh, people of color in the state of Vermont and, and, and have a, uh, a board that reviews any of these actions where there's, there's officer activity involved. So it, it's developing with statistics, it's developing with reporting, it's developing with uh, uh, folks through the community being part of uh, a board, which is really a, a good thing. Um, so I wanted to say that that is part of one of the activities that Keith and I are doing. Um, Outright Vermont is moving. Uh, they were over here, right over here actually, on uh, North Champlain, and they're moving across the aisle, so to speak. They're going from their little tiny cramped offices over to what was the senior uh, center. Oh, cool. Uh, and so they are, they're going to occupy much more space, have cooking facilities as well, which is nice, uh, bigger and broader meeting space, and um, uh, I think they're going to be very happy with their new spot. Rights and Democracy is moving into their old space to have a little bit more formal uh, office uh, on that. Um, I wanted to let you know that on the 28th of December, we're going to have a community potluck uh, with um, the Pride Center of Vermont, and we have decided to do that uh, now on a regular basis. So if you're, if you're part of the community and want to come grab some really good food, there was awesome food there last time. I, um, I, would, I would definitely definitely invite you to come and have dinner uh, with us. Uh, we are, I'm going to advocate that we always check the uh, check the web for events. Uh, all of my agencies that I work with, uh, Pride Center Vermont, uh, Outright Vermont, uh, Vermont Cares, Green Mountain Crossroads down in Brattleboro, and of course the Rainbow Umbrella of Central Vermont, uh, all post their activities and fun things to do. And basically we're, we're all responsible for community building. Um, Hey, uh, where are you? Uh, where are you next? Do you, do you have an idea of what you're up to? Comedy-wise, yeah. Um, you know, there's going to be every Monday night. There's a, a free show down at Skinny Pancake. It's called Comedy and Crepes. Um, I believe I'm going to be in the uh, January January edition of that one. Uh, I'm also going to be hosting one of the the Funny Girl shows coming up in Winooski. So there will cool. be some fun stuff on the horizon. Things just kind of pop up when they come, and I'm happy to get in there. However, I can. It's it's really fun. I'm gonna give a one shout out to my friend uh, Marcus Pizer, who was uh, uh, one of the speakers for Transgender Day of Remembrance. I'm actually gonna enjoy Hanukkah with him and his parents at their home uh, this coming Sunday uh, for a traditional Hanukkah dinner. I want to mention too that Chuck and Penny uh, have um, formed a, a group called uh, Safe Harbor for Trans Teens, and they have the only um, the only foster home in Vermont that's that's actually certified to work with transgender youth. It's a really cool project. So if you get a chance to, to contribute or see them, um, awesome. Uh, awesome people. Uh, we are um, almost done. I can't think of anything. Can you think of anything else? Anything funny? Quick, add, add a little bit of a glimmer of, of your, your comic expertise before we go. Oh, man, I don't know. Be you're kind of putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> I sometimes go, go a little off the cuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like if we start now, I'm just gonna start talking about dicks again, and that's. <laughs> I got a lot of got a lot of weird things to say about dicks, and so I. It might be better to wait till another episode when I got some time. I can be a little long-winded. Okay, we can we can certainly do that. And I'd like to see you back. Um, I uh, enjoy the. Uh, rapport that we, we've established and have some good friends. Hey, I want to say thank you to Alex and all the people here at Channel 17. Um, I bring in another uh, episode of Comedy Estate. Hopefully you won't lose this one. Um, and I emphasize lose. Uh, looking at you, man. Yeah, we're looking at you, Alex. And I, <laughs> I, want, to, uh, I want to say uh, this is a great opportunity to, to talk to, uh, to my community. If you like the show, Please let these guys know. I, I want to keep doing this, and, and uh, Alex said I'm, I'm good at it, but I'm, I'm skeptical that I don't have outside corroboration. So uh, for uh, the Comedy Estate, uh, my friend Taylor Radke and uh, Brenda Churchill, I'm going to say thank you very much and have a great holiday season. Happy fucking holidays. Happy fucking holidays. What a good thought. <laughs> <laughs>